I now give the floor to His, Excellently, His Excellency Mbaye Mohamed, Minister for Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, responsible for the Arab world, diaspora, the Francophonie, and African integration of the Comoros. Excellencies, Mr. President of the General Assembly, uh, Majesty, Your Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, heads of delegation, ladies and gentlemen, assalam alaikum. It is my honor to convey to you the warm greetings of His Excellency, Mr. Azalia Soumani, President of the Union of the Comoros as well as his wishes for every success in the conduct of this work, which is of global significance. First and foremost, I wish to convey to the authorities of the United States, on behalf of our delegation, our warm gratitude for the warm welcome from you in New York during our participation during this 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly. I wish to also convey my warm greetings to His Excellency Philemon Young on his election and his, uh, our, we, we welcome his election to the presidency of the 79th session of the General Assembly. And I wish to tell him that we as Africans are honored by his presidency. I wish to pay a warm tribute to His Excellency, Mr. Dennis Francis, for his wise, skillful stewardship and his commitment to peace and development during his presidency of the 79th session of the General Assembly, the proceedings of which were steered by him. And lastly, on behalf of my country, I wish to thank his Excellency, Mr. Antonio Guterres, United Nations Secretary General, for his commitment to peace and development. Mr. President, this session of the United Nations General Assembly is opening once again at a delicate time in the life of the international community. Since the 22nd of February 2022, the war in Ukraine has continuous, uh, continued to ravage to great European countries, imperiling the well-being and the balance and disrupting the balance of the world. On behalf of our country, I urge the Russian and Ukrainian leaders to embrace the path of dialogue and negotiations. Uh, this is a wish from us to their peoples uh, uh, to ensure vis-a-vis uh, -vis the mark that will be left in history, but also we advocate a ceasefire, first and foremost, peace as well. These are prerequisites for peace, economic and social and uh, food-related development for the entire world, in particular in Africa, which has been plagued by conflict. I now turn to Palestine. In light of the realities endured on a day-to-day -day basis, there is no doubt that we are not seeing legitimate defense. This war has been punctuated by disproportionate use of force, largely targeting innocent people. This is the purest form of genocide perpetrated by the Israeli forces in Gaza, which we condemn. And there's an urgent need to bring this to an end. The horrors endured by the people in Palestine have been reflected uh, in our daily reality as we see the deaths of more than 40 thousand people, including women and innocent children, more than 100,000 injured people, forced displacements of thousands of people under inhumane conditions, as well as the systematic destruction of hospitals and resident, residential buildings. Our country reaffirms our full solidarity and our steadfast support uh, to the fraternal people of Palestine. We beseech the international community to act for an immediate cessation of hostilities and for a rapid resumption of the delivery of humanitarian assistance. Furthermore, 
we call for a fair and lasting solution rooted in international law and the relevant resolutions of the United Nations, we specifically call upon the international community to work quickly to arrive at the two-state solution that of two states, a sovereign Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital, living side by side in full security with Israel. We applaud the admission of the state of Palestine as a full-fledged member of the United Nations, as well as its participation in the work of the United Nations beginning with this session. I also wish to recall that uh, the situation in the West Bank is also of great concern, and as has been stressed by Cardinal Pizabala, Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, what is transpiring, what is transpiring is a palpable and concrete example of how hatred, resentment, contempt have unleashed forms of violence that are increasingly extreme and increasingly difficult to contain. The situation in the Sudan is also a focus of our attention. We call upon the two parties to the conflict to exercise restraint, to shield their populations from the horrors of this war, which for, to, for, which for fraternal peoples has lasted for far too long. I now turn to Western Sahara. The Union of the Comoros believes that the autonomy plan for this territory within the Sharifian Kingdom submitted in 2007 by the Moroccan authorities is the surest way to, to arrive at a lasting settlement to the anachronistic conflict. The perpetuation of this conflict runs counter to the interest of the peoples concerned and thwarts the economic development of the entire region. My country, therefore, calls upon the stakeholders to embrace this. We urge the international community to extend its support for this. On the other hand, I wish to stress that international law and openness to dialogue need to prevail with a grasp of the problems, but particularly political issues. The same applies to respect for the territorial integrity of states. And as for the question of the Comoran island of Mayotte, uh, let us recall that uh, Comoran unity is a reality based on ethnogeographic, linguistic, religious, and economic data, despite the fact that this is an island nation. And this is in addition to the country's commitment to the sacrosanct principles of international law and to the resolutions of the United Nations, which recognize the sovereignty of, of the Comoros over the island of Mayotte. I therefore wish to take this opportunity, being present here on the rostrum of the General Assembly, eminent symbol of multilateralism, to reaffirm the steadfast desire of the government of Comoros to respect law, rule of law, and our openness to dialogue when it comes to this dispute pitting the Kingdom of, uh, pitting the Union of Comoros against France. Uh, and this is important to achieve a fair lasting solution to safeguard the shared interests of our friendly countries. The Union of Comoros reiterates our commitment to the declaration adopted at the Summit for the Future, which was held on 22 September on the sidelines of the General Assembly. We advocate meaningful international cooperation to establish guidelines in order to shape legal tools guaranteeing development and equitable use of artificial intelligence in order to ensure that this help to result in growth, productivity, a growth of productivity and knowledge throughout the world. This declaration ushers in inter alia promising prospects in terms of taking on board and tackling specific issues faced by small island developing states. In this regard, the SIDS4 conference, which was held last May in Antigua and Barbuda, also was an important step forward in this universal awareness. And we call for stringent respect for the Paris Agreement, as well as meaningful 
and uh, appropriate levels of financial and technical support. Uh, we, expect, we anticipate with uh, great interest, we eagerly anticipate the next conference on financing for development to be held in Spain in 2025. This conference will be an opportunity for states in the South to champion reforms in banks and multilateral institution, development institutions as well as uh, to ensure a, pre a, a, a predictable framework for sustainable resources that are acceptable and, uh, accessible and predictable. To ensure the success of this uh, event, uh, we cherish the hope that countries concerned will unite to work together to set out their proposals. Peace and political stability are two critical pillars underpinning development initiatives. Following the elections on 14 January 2024, which resulted in His Excellency Mr. Azalea Asumani taking up the Supreme Magistrature of the country, uh, Mr. Asumani undertook to advance the noble mission of accelerating our development by 2030. Our head of state has adopted a commitment to accelerate the emergence of the, and development of the country. This is reflected in the implementation of landmark projects, which are reflected in the Developing Comoros Plan. And they were presented during the Conference of Parties of Development Partners of the Comoros. And this conference was held in Paris in, in December 2019. The Comoros Development Plan is also ha also contains structural projects, including the development program for the blue economy. This is a critical, promising sector, which will be an engine for the economic and social transformation of our country. We recognize the crucial role of the blue economy, and we wish to stress the specificities of island states. My country, therefore, organized in Moroni in June 2023 under the Comoran presidency of the African Union with support from partners, the Conference of Ministers on the Blue Economy and Climate Action, and the theme was island states and the avant-garde. There was participation during this conference from coastal and island states in Africa. The Moroni Declaration was adopted following this conference, and among other elements, there was an emphasis on those of a roadmap to implement in order to take into account the specificities and the vulnerability of states, of these states, by the international community. The next Oceans Conference will afford us an opportunity to present the Moroni Declaration, whose commitments converge with the global sustainable development goals. Mr. President, our government attributes particular importance to young people. We have a number of, in, uh, we have a number of initiatives which are underway to uh, generate entrepreneurship opportunities for young people, to provide them with job opportunities in various sectors, and to ensure that they play a leading role in the country's socioeconomic development. The promulgation of the One Youth, One, jo one Job Law is a reflection of this intention. The President and the Head of State of the Union of the Comoros is committed to the empowerment of young people. And uh, he has placed great trust in young people in terms of their ability to generate new momentum as an engine for the country. And a few months ago, a government was put together comprised largely of young civil servants, and the challenge was undertaken to engage young people in the country's transformation as for the renewal of Comoros. Beyond these key areas, the head of state also highlighted sports, culture, art, and heritage in the five-year agenda, thereby emphasizing his, uh, his keenness to develop social sectors that contribute to shaping and enhancing our national identity. With respect to athletics, on behalf of the President of the Union of Comoros and his government, I wish to pay a vibrant tribute to our national team, the Coalescents, for their performances, which are a source of great pride for our people. We, as an international community, are faced with many challenges, and we need to pull our efforts to tackle them. This session, has brought together the Assembly of Nations. It generates hope for peoples to see a highlighting of shifts 
in issues having to do with their anxieties and concerns. In behalf of the noble, in the name of the noble values which unite us, let us work to assuage these anxieties and concerns, transforming them into hope, especially by rising to the aspirations of our respective peoples. Thank you very much for your attention. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, responsible for the Arab world, diaspora, the Francophonie, and African integration of the Comoros.